variable force we're going to be talking about here probably is when you have a spring. When you have a spring, the force on that is always changing. It depends by how much you stretch it. The more you stretch it, the larger the force. When you go back with it, that force starts to decrease, 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 decrease. So the force is always changing here. It's not a constant value. Well, we know the force of a string, a spring, I mean, it's k times x. We put minus, that minus indicates the direction, but the value of that is really k times x. And it's always, the direction always backward. Always reverse. Reverse to what? Reverse, that means if you push on it, the direction is going to be backward to the force. If you stretch it, if I pull in this direction, the force will be in that direction. If I compress it, the force will be in this direction. It's always backward to the direction you stretch it or you compress it. That's what the minus sign indicates. So, but the value of the force is k times x. Well, if you graph that, if you graph k times x, that's a straight line. It will look something like this. This is the force, k times x. So if I stretch that spring by a value of x, this is x here, that distance, x, you stretch it by x, then if you find the right value for that, when this is equals x, you plug it in, and this height is really k times x. Well, the work is really this area, the size of that area. Let me highlight that, I have a pencil here. If I was to highlight this area, what is that area equal to? We know the area equals what? One half base times height, isn't it? For a triangle, my base here is what? Is x and my height is what? Kx, so when you do the equation, that's one half kx squared. That's the area. The area happens to be the work done by a spring. So the work done by a spring is calculated by going with one half k times x squared. That's how much energy in that spring there. So when you compress a spring two centimeters, we know what k is. It'll tell you how much energy in it. The spring we did in the lab yesterday, we calculated K, and I'm drawing a mental block. I have no idea what K for that was. Did anyone remember what K for it? Nobody get K for that one? 140. 149. Okay, 149. K for the spring there. If I compress that by 2 centimeters, then the amount of energy in that, the work will be done if I release it, if I make a toy out of it, like a bow and arrow or whatever, or a BB gun, you compress it there, how much energy is going to be? 1 half times K, which is, I'll just put the equation first. That would be 1 half, k is 149, and x squared, x is what? 0 0.02 meters, that's 2 centimeters squared. I got 0 0.03 joules. That's how much work is required to compress it. So when you release that, if it's a gun, when you release that, that's how much energy is going to be. It's going to push whatever object you have there forward. That string, that's not a large value of K, so if it's like an arrow there, it's not going to go that far with it. 
On the other hand, if I pick another one with a, a large value of k, really one of those hard springs, k equals a thousand, and I compress that two centimeters again, or stretch it two centimeters, how much energy is stored in it? It's one half k, which is a thousand times 0 0.02 squared. That's 0 0.2 joules. I'm not talking about compressing it that much, just a hair, two centimeters. Normally with these uh, toys, you compress them like five, six, seven centimeters. So decent amount there. You saw that with a projectile when you compressed it, it went down about four or five centimeters. And that thing went up in the air about uh, 10 feet, eight feet, yeah. You get a stronger K for that, you can fire it up to the sixth floor. You can put a hole in the ceiling tile. Okay. Let's take another example on this. Let's say we have a block attached to a spring. This is the wall here. We attach a spring to the wall, and now we attach a block of wood to it. Let's assume this block has a mass of 1.5 kilogram. And it's moving in this direction as initial velocity of 22 meters per second. Well, if this is moving, what's going to happen? It's going to compress the string, keep going till what? What will happen to that story? You're going to see the spring go like this, and the block stops moving. And they keep moving, moving, moving till it stops, right? So it's gonna have a final velocity of what? Zero. And the question is, if K for the spring, if K for the spring is 475 Newton per meter, find the compression of the string find how much. The compression of the spring. Basically by how much the spring is going to compress. Assuming there's no friction, because if there's a friction, we lose some of the energy. So we're making the assumption here, no friction. Let's look at the two stories here. Let's look at the block of the wood. Has initial velocity of what? 22. has final velocity of zero. And let's look at the spring here. It was like this, and now it's like this. 
compressed. And what's that distance D? That's what we're looking for. We know K for the spring is 475. Let's see how much energy in the block of wood that was lost because it slowed down, stopped. Negative energy here. The energy of the block here, called B, it's one half m v final squared minus one half m v initial squared. The change in kinetic energy. The mass of that is 1.5. Final velocity is 0. Square it. 1.5 times the initial velocity, 22. And you square it. And it says the amount of energy is negative 363 joules. Negative because you're slowing down. Well, why would you slow down? What makes you slow down? Isn't that the spring pushing back on you? So what is the amount of energy or work done by the spring? The spring is what? One half K times X squared. So it's one half K is what? 475. And X is the distance that was compressed, which is D. Squared. And that's equal to 237.5 D squared. And what do we know about these two numbers? If there is no friction, is the reason this one has to slow down because this one is pushing on it. So whatever this one lost, this one gain. So these two numbers must equal to each other. The negative here indicated was actually a loss there. The value of that energy is 363 joules. That's the value of it. The negative means you lost it is equal to 237.5 d squared. Or if you want to be technical with this, that should be a negative because you're pushing this way and it's going the opposite direction. And now we have d squared equals what? 363 divided by 237.5. D squared is 1.53, and if you take the square root of that, ah, uh, 1.24 meters, not centimeters, meters. Notice that's a lot of compression. That's because this one is moving at 22 meters per second. 22 meters per second. That was moving at almost 50 miles per hour. That block of wood was really cruising. It wasn't like slow. It's going to compress it. That's not a large value for K either. It's going to hit it. It's going to compress the whole thing. Now, if I reduce the speed to 2.2 meters per second, you move the decimal point one place here, I bet you'll be 12 centimeters, 0.12.
but I gave it a large velocity. That's why I compressed it by a lot here. The last topic, and we're done. These sections, as I said, really quick, quick sections. 